Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube. And if you haven't already done so, please pause the video right now and hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, if you feel extra generous, hit the thanks button. In this video, I'm going to talk about a few bookmarks that I saved to go through this weekend. And these bookmarks, of course, as the title says, are all related to machine learning and AI with a special focus on image processing and image analysis. So if you share those interests with me, then you may find this video to be useful in terms of finding these uh, references. I'll leave the links in the description, so please go ahead and click them if you really don't want to be bothered by watching this entire video. Let me uh, jump into the browser just to open these four links and literally show you why I am interested in reading them. And I promise I won't take too much of your time. So the first one is uh, titled Sketch Your Own GAN. And as the name suggests, apparently you can sketch and then uh, uh, generate this GAN and then you can actually uh, generate realistic looking images. I'm a big fan of GANs and this is why I saved this. And another note, uh, just a quick high level summary here. They say they present a method GAN sketching for rewriting these GANs with one or more sketches to make GANs training easier for novice users. So so that, that speaks to me right there. I'm not that novice, but I consider myself novice when it comes to machine learning AI because the, it's, it's such a large field, right? So we're all novices in this field. And uh, how they are doing it, uh, they are changing the weights of an original GAN model according to the user sketches. And they encourage the model's output to match the user sketches. So this, this actually made me a bit more interesting, uh, you know, I'm more interested in reading this paper. So uh, this looks like a nice, uh, nice read uh, for this weekend for me. Hopefully I'll have time to go through all of these and jumping on to the second one. And uh, this one is titled Latent Based Regression Through GAN Semantics. Initially, I didn't understand the, I didn't understand the, you know, the context under which they're uh, mentioning this. But when I read this, they basically are proposing a new method for solving regression tasks using uh, weak supervision. Uh, just to get a bit more information here. Of course, they mentioned that GANs are successful at encoding semantic information within the latent space. And this encoding manifests a smooth linear direction. So what they're saying is, okay, now you have a baby face and an adult face, and the transition going from baby to the adult face is not as complex as you think. They're saying that this is probably a linear relation there. So we show that such directions are not only linear, but that the magnitude of change induced on the respective attribute is approximately linear with respect to the distance traveled along them. So my interpretation of this statement is basically, again, going back to this example, uh, baby to human, let's say uh, uh, adult, fully grown adult, let's say 100 years old. So the baby, let's say zero or one, right? Uh, so going from this to 100 years, so if you go halfway through, that person would look like a 50 year old person. If you go three fourths, 75 year old, one fourth, 25 year old, one fifth, 20 year old. So they basically are saying it's not only a linear relationship, but then the distance uh, uh, is uh, also uh, uh, linear right there. So I'm, I'm, uh, I always wondered about this. I know that, okay, this latent space is highly curved and can we, can we interpolate these in a linear fashion and all that, but uh, this paper seems to be uh, at least uh, shedding some light into the questions that uh, that I had. The next one I saved is uh, called Path ML. This looks like a dissertation, like a thesis, uh, because this is uh, how many pages? 83 pages long. And it talks about unified framework for whole slide image analysis with deep learning. So if you're into whole slide imaging, whether you're in pathology, digital pathology type of field, this can be a useful paper for you to focus on where you are working with these large images. And even if you are into like aerial photography, maybe there is something in here. I haven't read this, so I don't know. But the reason I'm reading this is, of course, it is talking about whole slide imaging and handling the data is always uh, a challenge. And there are many more challenges, right, with whole slide imaging. And they introduce, they call this PathML, which is a Python library for performing pre and post processing of these uh, whole slide images. So they are presenting the best practices. I always love best practices because someone else did all the work and they're giving us the essence, right? This is what these papers are. This is someone's lifetime work in some cases, and they're giving us the essence of what they have found. So I always like to learn about the best practices. Uh, 
And uh, in this case, they're talking about whole slide image analysis, and they're giving step-by-step -step instructions or guide uh, for this framework all the way from annotating to pre-processing the slides to implementing like the, the, the networks and also to training and push process. This is the entire thing. So I hope these 83 pages, I'm not sure if I can get it this week, but uh, I, I'm hoping to do this. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 again, if you if you relate to this, obviously, can be very useful. And uh, this is a pretty short read. I think uh, uh, I saved this. I went through the the this article. Now I saved it so I can go back and see if I can find their GitHub page and get a bit more information about it. And this is basically a GAN phase generator that offers you know, greater control. And uh, and here you can actually see their drawing and as the face is appearing as their drawing. I, I always love real life applications when it comes to GANs or any any of these. So this this seems like a very cool application area. So uh, again, that's the reason I bookmark this. Now, finally, I usually try to read uh, books on a daily basis. And uh, this week, I plan on actually getting back to this book. In fact, I started this yesterday, uh, this book uh, uh, yesterday, and this is called Making It Personal. This has nothing to do with machine learning, by the way. And the reason I'm mentioning this is uh, you're probably writing code uh, for yourself, but at some point you probably would like to write code so others can use it. Whether it is in an academic environment or industrial environment, when you're designing something for others to use, it's, it's very important for us to understand exactly how to design it. I mean, because we know every little bit about the code so we can you know, uh, change things. But when you're designing a product for someone else, it's very important to make that product personal for the other person, for the user. And this uh, uh, this is the fifth time I'm reading this book, by the way. And every time I read, I find some gold nugget in some chapter. So I'm just reading it again. And I definitely recommend this in case you are into especially developing software products. So you can actually see how you can, you can uh, you can build a product that others actually uh, love. So these are some of the things that I plan on reading over this weekend and also as part of uh, so, you know uh, next week. And I hope you relate to some of these and I hope you find this information to be useful. Again, please hit the like button if you really find this these type of videos to be useful so I can create more such content on probably a uh, bi-weekly basis. So thank you guys again and do not forget to subscribe to this channel.